It's November 19th and it's about time for another update on our favorite interstellar object. A lot has happened since we last spoke about it. So first of all, there have been three new pictures that have come out and no, NASA has not released anything. Although tomorrow on Wednesday, they are going to have a live stream where they're gonna share some data. Um, I'm glad they're doing that. I do think though it's a little problematic that they're holding off the data for a live stream and they should just release it to all the scientists. So hopefully they're gonna do the live stream and then release it because of course everybody needs to look at the same data and not just take anyone else's word for it, right? So on the 15th of November, a new image came out of Thailand and what it showed was that the object had several tails and anti-tails. And this is one of the anomalies, right? So for those who haven't been following this, this object is really interesting because although it was identified as a comet by NASA back in July, there has been, there have been so many pictures and so much data that's been collected, which has identified so many anomalies, which don't really support the hypothesis of a comet. And so there's this whole discourse and discussion about, is it a comet? Isn't it a comet? What is it? And then of course the psychics and the mystics are weighing in and we're like, well, we're talking to this thing and it's definitely alive. It's definitely not a comet. <laughs> and so I've been just giving, you know, doing videos and discussions both here um, on TikTok and also on YouTube about, um, you know, what happens when we look at the astronomical data and also look at the psychic data. And this is something I'm really interested in because I'm a psychic medium, a medical intuitive, but I also have a background and a degree in astrophysics and I'm a philosopher. And so I'm really interested in these questions where we look at things from a philosophical perspective, a scientific perspective, and also from the perspective of a psychic. So the image that we got on the 15th was from an astrophotographer named Murata in New Mexico. And then there was another image on the 17th by someone named Kugel, and I don't know where they're from. So a lot of these people are amateur astronomers, but then we're also getting pictures out of some, you know, bigger observatories, but we're really not hearing from like the space agencies or the really, you know, JPL or the really big telescopes. We're not really hearing from them or seeing images from them. And so we're, we're all kind of on the edge of our seat. Okay, when are we gonna see the big images from the Mars high rise? So there's a rover on Mars, which is supposed to be able be able to get the best pictures of this object because it flew by Mars back on October 3rd and we, we should have got our best pictures then, but they have not been released ostensibly because of the shutdown, but we're not really sure. Some of us are suspicious because at the same time that they didn't release these images, they have released lots of images, other images from that same uh, rover. And you know, so why, why those images and not these images when this actually is a more important topic? So since I last spoke about them, there are two new anomalies. One of them has to do with, let's see, did I talk this before? The non-gravitational acceleration that occurred when it was behind the sun. And then there's two more after that. One has to do with the fact that it's a rotating object. And even though it's rotating every 16 hours, the images that they have of it have these jets which are not smeared on the picture. So that was raised as an anomaly. And this is just the 12th anomaly. So there's been 12 different anomalies, things that basically can't be explained easily by the hypothesis that it's a comet. And so that then raises the question of, well, is it a comet or is it something else? And if, if it is something else, let's talk about it. So there's a famous astrophysicist from Harvard, Avi Loeb, who's been the only person really, a really prominent person who's been out there saying that, hey, we need to consider the possibility that this is not a comet, maybe it's artificial, maybe it's an alien, maybe it's something we've never seen before that doesn't fall into any of the classifications of things we've ever seen. Um, we need to you know, ask more questions. And yet the official story has persistently been, this is a comet, even though it doesn't act like a comet. So if a comet, why not comet shaped? If a comet, why not comet behaving? <laughs> <laughs> right? These are the questions some of us have. So like Avi Lowe has been asking this, I've been asking this. Uh, there's another creator called Angry Astronaut who's been asking questions. He's been saying, you know, there are all these people who are insisting that it's absurd for Avi Loeb to, to say, oh, this could be artificial. This could be, you know, technological and not, not a natural rock spinning through space. The people who are saying that aren't actually providing any evidence to support their claim, right? And science is all about evidence. And I have a quote from Avi Loeb that I think is just perfect. He says, you know, when comet experts argued 
that 3i Atlas must be a familiar water-rich comet, as soon as it was discovered on July 1st, they behaved like artificial intelligence systems <laughs> which reflect their training data sets. <laughs> That's a very nerdy insult. <laughs> You're acting like AI, dude. <laughs> you can't think for yourself. It's kind of an insult to AI though. I mean, because really I've seen AI be a little bit more creative and analytical than some of these folks who are saying, it's a comet, it's a comet. We don't care what the data says. <laughs> All right, if you haven't been following it, I'm gonna go over some of these anomalies real quick. So it has a trajectory, which is aligned with our planets, which is very unlikely, 0.005% likelihood. It has a sunward jet, which means instead of it having just a tail like a regular comet, it actually has kind of an anti-tail going towards the sun. Um, it has a nucleus, which is a thousand times bigger than one of the other interstellar comets we've seen, and a million times bigger than the other one. <laughs> So it's just like in a whole different category. Number four, um, its speed has never been seen before, the speed that it's traveling at. Um, oh, oh, oh I, there's a couple, there's some of these are combined. Also, its arrival time, the way it's passing by um, the different planets in a particular way so that it can kind of do these drive-bys of, you know, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, and Earth. Not, it's not coming that close to Earth. Uh, number five, it's nickel content. So when they look at, you know, the chemical com components in this in this so-called comet, it's got a lot of nickel and not a lot of iron, which we typically only find in industrial um, outputs. Um, number six, it's only 4% water. Comets are typically frozen water. They are giant ice cubes. This one does not have water in it. <laughs> Seven, it has something called negative polarization, which has never been seen before. Um, eight, it has, it, it arrived at the same kind of, from the same location as the wow signal, which is a signal that was received back, I think in the 90s or the 80s, which appeared to be the first sign of intelligent life from some other location. When it went behind the sun, it suddenly got brighter and turned blue, two things that it should not have done. It had all of these jets coming out of it, which should have suggested a certain mass, which needed to be explained by things that didn't happen, like it didn't explode. Um, and I think that's related to the non-gravitational acceleration too. So it suddenly accelerated behind the sun, but it wasn't related to the gravity of the sun and it didn't explode. So they don't really know how to explain that. And finally, number 12 is it has all of these jets coming out of it, despite the fact that it's rotating. And if something is rotating with jets, those jets should be smeared kind of like a spiral graph photograph, you know, picture painting. <laughs> but that's not how it looks. Now, Stefan Burns, one of the astrophysicists talking about this says, oh, we can actually explain those jets and the fact that they're not smearing by realizing this is a plasma. And so there is now a paper out Dobsonian Power, who's another creator who's been talking about this, an amateur astronomer, has just been talking about, oh, there's a new paper out saying, yeah, it's not a spacecraft or a comet, it's a plasmoid. Now, apart from the science, which is very interesting, there are those of, there's the, those of us like myself who are psychic mediums who've been able to tune into this object and get information that way. And so some of what I've been told about this object intuitively is that it is a sentient being. It is not a comet. Um, it's coming here on purpose. It's multidimensional. I've been told that it's coming here to do a survey of life forms in the solar system, of which there are many. They told me that there are life forms on Venus, Jupiter, Mars, and Earth. They also came here to have a conversation or an energetic exchange with the sun, and that does explain the solar flares we're experiencing, and those are affecting us energetically. When I spoke to 3i Atlas, they told me that it's okay if people think they're a rock because humans are afraid of everything but rocks. <laughs> Everything floating, floating around in the sky that isn't a rock is scary to us, but they mean us no harm. But they did come here to raise our consciousness, particularly to raise the consciousness of the scientists who are kind of stuck in this dogmatic fear of the unknown. And their intention is to contribute to a scientific revolution for us, which is also a revolution in consciousness. And this is preparing us for open contact, which will happen in the next few months. But we need to be ready for it. We need to expand our horizons. We need to understand that we're not the only people out here. And if we can accept that, then maybe we can learn from those who are going to come visit us.